What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Ladies and gentlemen, and I'm pumped for this one. Welcome out, ladies and gentlemen, Decode Your Reality. My name is Logan, your tour guide, and today we're going to be breaking down the second coming, the return of the Christ, the second co- <laughs> The second coming of Christ. Bam! Look at this photograph that AI drew. Who says AI is useless or, oh, I don't want to go there. Look how amazing this thing. I, of course, you have you got to be creative with your words. But this is the second right here. This is a complete vision, a manifestation of what this is going to look, what it has been looking like. The second coming of Christ. And how I got this, why I'm doing this. <laughs> Why I'm doing this is because of my latest, what's your question, number 73. And it was on, it was going into my birthday. It was on February 3rd to February 4th. Not that that matters. It's not about me. 73 is you're on television, right? But it was this comment by this person here. I don't even know your name. Uncanny deduction. And he, he asked this question, are you the second coming of Christ? I was kind of chuckling. <laughs> and my answer was, I'm just Logan. So if you think I'm the second, a lot of people hate me. They can't stand me. <laughs> I don't know. I know who I am, but it's not about me. This reality is not about me. I am just doing my job. If you want to consider that, if you think I'm the Christ, because I got sunglasses and I put sunglasses on, on this and all, whatever, then by all means, like, like if you're the King of Hearts, okay, cool. Then you got you're the King of Love. <laughs> so would I like that? I don't care. You can title me whatever you want, but th- but I will say thank you so very much because you you promulgated me to type because when I saw that I'm like. Oh, I wonder what the second coming of Christ is in numerology. I was intrigued because, of course, I'm a, as a decoder, I'm going to decode it. And what, what, I, what I found blew me away. <laughs> it blew me away, folks. Second coming of Christ decoder. Put on a pair of headphones, block out the outside world. You know the shindig, baby. So here we go. So the second coming of Christ, and this is, this is what it led me to. <laughs> So a very big shout out to the great Santos Bonacci. And I I was like, when I found this, I shared this with him and I, hey, I I texted him earlier today and I said, Santos, do you mind if I share this with my community? He's like, no, go ahead. And I know it made his day because he put his text message was wow, wow, wow. That's what he texted me back on, on, on a text message. So Santo Spinacci, this one's for you, brother. This is the second time I've decoded the great Santo Spinacci. And I have nothing but love for this guy because he's, he's one of my great friends. I don't get to hang out with him all the time. He doesn't even live in the same part of the world that I do anymore, but I consider him a brother. <clears throat> I don't agree with his behavior. Like some of the, like some people, how do you, this, he's doing it. Listen, he's just doing him, man. And I love him no matter what. And I've said this because a lot of people have been asking me, what's going on with Santos? I miss the old Santos. But it doesn't mean that he, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. Some people don't like his behavior, the way he said this and that. Okay, I'm not a fan of that, but he's, it doesn't mean I'm wrong. It doesn't mean he's right. It doesn't mean he's wrong. He's just doing Santos Bonacci. And that's it. That's all you have to know, folks. But I'm going to tell you right now, 
besides my opinion, which is absolutely meaningless, by the way, of what I think of this man. I think he's just a genius, and, I, and I'm going to show you. I'm show you. He is part of the second coming of Christ. He is playing that role. He is playing this role. You've seen it. All of you have seen this role. And I'm going to show you with absolute clarity that the great Santos Bernacci, who has forged the fires, who has given so much to the world, and that's what I value in this guy. Okay. Does he have it all figured out? Is he right in everything? It may be not in your world. But he's not here to twist your arm. He's not here to make you believe in something. He may be a little bit forceful sometimes with his vocabulary and his words, but he's, that's just how he rolls. Okay. But anyway, second coming of Christ. <laughs> you didn't, probably didn't think it was going to come to this with Santos, but here it is. He was born on March 24th, ni- March 24th, 1963. And here's the numerology of it. This is how I found it. So I found 83 and I'm like, oh, I wonder what the 83rd day on the Gregorian calendar is. And there it was. Bam! It was Santos's freaking birthday. And then I'm like, man, the context, the content Santos has been putting out, you know, he's had a lot of this, the anger and just like, going to burn you guys down. You guys are going down, you know, but then the older stuff was like exposing and showing people how this world works esoterically, mainstream, showing people things they've never seen before. I've gotten, I, listen, I was a fan of this guy back when I started doing my decoding. And I was like, I can't wait. I want to meet this guy. And then my wish came true. He came to LA. I picked him up from the airport. It was awesome. And he's such a glorious person when you get to know him. All right, we all have the, the, the good, bad, and ugly inside of us. But let me, let me tell you straight up, I have nothing to gain. He's not giving me any money to, to make this video. <laughs> But Santos Bonacci, the great Santos Bonacci, he is playing the Jesus Christ character. Look at this, March 24th, the 83rd day of the year. <laughs> right? And, it, and it, I'm just going to show you the synchronicities. It's absolutely insane what this guy's doing on the world stage and what he, what he came here to do. See his last name, Bonacci? He's a sword, folks. What he has given to the world, all like his older material, in my opinion, is his absolute best. Santos, I love your old material, is my favorite. I learned so much from the videos from 2011, 12. He's been to prison. I went to prison. He was a JW. I was a JW. Preached the, pre- preached the Bible from door to door. That's what I did. So him and I have a lot in common. And he used his words, which is a permutation for the word sword. 22, 22. This is master builder. What do you think he was doing? He was building at a master level, teaching people the esoteric, syncretism, astrology, numerology, chemistry, alchemy, all that. He's read so many books. So many books. You know, with his videos, so many amazing videos, too many to count. Love his information. And here it is. You see, folks, because in the story of the Christ, whether the guy was real or not, it doesn't, you, there's no way to prove that he was. There's no way to disprove that he was. But I, what I can tell you is what I can prove is this is a real dude and he's doing his job. He has a scripted reality. This is my opinion. This doesn't mean Santos is going to agree with me. By the way, these are my opinions and truths, as I put in the beginning of this video. So what I say here, Santos definitely, I'm not saying he's going to endorse what I'm saying. But he know he can see he knows he knows he's in a movie. Talk to him about this. But this right here, Matthew ten verses thirty four, Jesus clearly says this is Jesus speaking. I'm not coming with peace. I'm coming with a sword, and the and the sword, of course, the sword is a lot of things. It's a lot of death, obviously physical death, but it's also the words sword, the words. And he did a lot of that. He still does use a lot of words to be that Christ character. The the words will be spoken. The truth will be spoken. The aspects of this reality will be spoken to where the veil will be lifted. The sword. And there you go. Is it an accident that his name is an exact match to the word sword or words? That's what he has based his career on. Knowledge and words. Okay, and 
even this humdinger of them all right here in the entirety of this presentation i mean is it is it obvious Jesus, Greek. This is where the original, forget Yeshua. Yeshua is a name. I'm not saying it's wrong because it's Hebrew, but there's no Jesus in the Old Testament. Sorry, there. Joshua is not Jesus. J Joshua did not make loaves of bread from fishes. Joshua didn't heal people. Okay, Jesus is a New Testament idea. And it means it comes from the Greek Roman aspect, the Roman Catholic Church, but that's for another decision but uh, another topic but you can see the 24th santos is born on march 24th so if you're born on the 24th and you're somebody who's out to save the world you're part of the second coming of christ we all are ladies and gentlemen so the absolute answer to this the second coming all of you are part of that whether or not you have a 24 in your birthday your name numerology if you're out there changing the course of this reality that you are part of the second coming of christ but you could see how this guy my good friend Santos, uh, he, he's, he's right in the thick of it. <laughs> he's right in the thick of it. And he prides himself on being in Aries, in the tropical. Fire, Mars, he prides it, himself in it. He's do, and I see him doing his job. And I, I just, you know, I'm a fan of his research. I'm a fan of certain selected ways of his being, but that's my preference. Even the, the, combina the connection here of the word Bethlehem, the birth city of the Christ is a freaking 22 in the original because Jesus w was 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 born from the Hebrew aspect. He was the king of the Jews, Hebrew, 22. 22. So you can see the uncanny connections here. 22, 22, master builder. Carp Jesus was a carpenter, master builder, tied to the Masonic aspect. Absolutely. That's why the Masons use the Bible. Nothing wrong with it, folks. I hope you get past that programming. Let's continue on with this. And we now look at the latitude, longitude. This is really important. Where are you at in the latitude, longitude of your living situation right now? That's going to tell a lot about the energy that you're getting, receiving, et cetera, et cetera. Here is the latitude for Bethlehem and the longitude of Bethlehem, 31 and 35. That's going to give you a total of 66. 31 and 35 is 66 which is tied to this element called dysprosium. Now we get into alchemy. Why alchemy? Because it's part of our reality. It has everything to do. This is where we're gonna find the philosopher's stone. And the big takeaway is this. See, dysprosium, if you go study dysprosium, it has many atomic, uh, several atomic uh, masses, uh, isotopes, they call them. One of them is 163. What is important about the 163? Well, how about the time of birth that Santos was born? 16.30 p.m. What do you see right there? What do you see right there? Well, you think this is an accident? See, this is a scripted reality, ladies and gentlemen. Santos is in a scripted reality. He, he, he doesn't have to agree with that. That's my opinion. But I'm saying is that this is a predestined, scripted reality. And I'm a fan of this man because of him living through his code and doing the things that he's doing. And I know some of you say, well, what about his belligerent this and that? Folks, if that's what you're all focusing on, well, you're looking in the wrong direction. Just look at what the man has done, what he is continually doing on the world stage. And that's it. Take, take whatever you want from it. Take whatever you want from it. But there's the 31 and 35 given the 66. 163 is the isotope matching up his birth time. Not a coincidence. 40, even this, the 430, 43 is the 14th prime number. 14 is tied to the word God. <clears throat> so let's look at his birth latitude, longitude. He was born in Myrtleford, Australia, the great country of Australia. He was in a, uh, he worked on a farm. He was in the farming. <laughs> and he's got 36 degrees south, 146 degrees east. There's the 36. Bridging it with alchemy, 36 degrees south, 36 for the protons of Krypton, which means cryptos, which is where you're going to get cryptocurrency from, because that's what we're moving into with the age of Jesus. That's why Jesus came in the age of Pisces. He's like, hey, my kingdom's no part of this world. Yeah, because he was talking about the age of Aquarius, which is why in Luke 22, verses 10, he says, follow me into the house with a man bearing a pitcher of water. Hello, that's called Aquarius. 
And you can see the 83 is the isotope for Krypton. There it is, the second coming of Christ. It's Krypton. And even this word right here matches the protons of Krypton, which matches the isotope of second coming of Christ. It's Krypton, which means cryptos, which means hidden, as does dysprosium. This means hard to get. This means hidden. In Washington, D.C., they have that puzzle. It's in cryptic writing. Yeah, go study that stuff. But you can see the, 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 the connections. I mean, even this, the subtleties that most people would not even pay attention to, the S means the sun. I know it means south, but the S also is the first word for sun. It's also the first word of second coming. That's why Santos is tied to this. Okay, that's why he's tied to this, and that's why he's tied to the word. This is what he uses. So yeah, I'm coming with a sword, but the sword is also the words. So yeah, there will be the swords. The sword will be physicality. There will be, um, you know, physical deaths and all that kind of, yeah, it's already happening, ladies and gentlemen. It's already begun. It's been happening. But then there's the words, which is what Santos has been so good at is he's been using his vocabulary and his words. He speaks multiple languages, not an accident. And he's been putting his content out for a very long time. He's put his dues in. And that's what I'm a fan of. Even with the, the Archangel Michael <laughs> right there. Okay. All, all in Chaldean. Don't even need to move away from it. How valuable Chaldean numerology is. So I'm going to end this presentation. I have a few slides to go. I'm going to look at his birth chart. I'm going to look at his birth chart here to the left. I'm going to use tropical because that's what he favors. So I'm going to, I'm going to yield to his favoritism of the tropical. And, you know, in sidereal, his son is going to be in Pisces and tropical. It's just over the edge in two degrees Aries. And he prides himself on that. That's fine. Again, he has a lot of Aryan energy because Aries is fire. And, you know, for Jesus was the, the, in, in the, turning over the temples and the taxes. Like, what are you people doing? And he's doing that with like, you know, like, hey, wake up. Wake up, man. This is this and this is that. And, and you, could, you could see the value in astrology. And it's always going to be astrology because this is your owner's manual. You can see in his first house, he's got Leo there. So even though Aries is the ruler of that, he, he, he moves into a placement of Leo, which is another fire sign. So you can see the guy, and he's got Mars there. So Mars naturally is in the first house, but it comes into the lens of Leo. Leo's the lion. Leo is going to roar and you're going to listen. This is what, this is Santos using his words. And he's going to be in the limelight because Leo represents the limelight. You're going to listen to what I got to say and you're going to see me. I'm going to get pissed off. I'm going to get angry. That's what this is saying right here. And his fifth house of Leo is occupied by Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is the hermit in wisdom. I'm going to come back to that. So his manifestations is through philosophy, religion, theology, all that stuff. All of the ninth house. And you go to his ninth house and it's occupied by Aries. So it just goes round robin. And his Aries, of course, is where his son at two degrees is at, which he prides himself on. So his wisdom and his philosophy and his ways of life, he's going to tell you about it through Aries. This is the magician, the wizard. This is his spirit of God inside of him right here in the ninth house. His midheaven is in Gemini, which is a mercurial ruled house. So you know his job on the world stage is to do communication. He's done it very well. People, they try to suppress him. He comes, he doesn't back down. And I think the biggest marker, of course, is the most stacked house, which is the eighth house, which is by default is Scorpio. So obviously behind the scenes is a Scorpio-based energy, which is occult, mainstream, astrology, numerology. This is why he's become very good at it, become a very fond of it, telling people this is the nature of our reality and how it works. And his Scorpio lens is through right down here in the fourth house. So he's going to build a structure. He's going to become very passionate about it. He's going to be part of his family heritage here, where he's going to build his family based on the occult. And he's got Poseidon here, Neptune. And I feel Poseidon is the screenplay writer. So Poseidon got the earth. Jupiter got the heavens. Pluto got the underworld. So Poseidon has a big marker in our reality when it comes to water. It's water. It's the very essence of being a human being. It is in the fourth house, which is a water house because it's ruled by cancer. 
So this, this obviously has a big marker for this, but you can see, look at all the energy he's got in his eighth house, which is a house of power. Eight means power. Eight is the Taurus field. He has talked about the Taurus field probably more than anybody I know. And that's what the number eight is. It's the infinity symbol. It's the Taurus field. And he's stacked here. He's got Jupiter, Zeus. He's got Mercury, the messenger. What do you think he does? He's got the moon to get emotionally involved with it. And he's got the wound of Chiron there. It doesn't mean, doesn't necessarily mean it has to be your wound. It can mean that you're going to take on the wounds of the world. All of this energy here. And of course, you know, Zeus is the captain of the church. The captain of the faith. If you go study the Society of Jesus, they had, uh, they had Saturn and, and Jupiter in the sign of Aries. That's where uh, Jupiter is right now. It's in Aries. The militants of the church to defend the church. But he, Santos is here. He, Jesus was a fisher of men. This is the other connection. Come on, folks. Jesus was a fisher of men. Opposite, he was a born of a virgin right there. What's in the uh, opposite house here for Santos? Freaking the wrecking ball of Pluto. <laughs> with Uranus, which is heaven. So the, the position here is that he's going to use this Pluto energy to be a wrecking ball, using his voice with Uranus, with no limits, being very eccentric about it, right? No limits, no boundaries. This is why you get the very colorful Los Santos at times. And this is in a symbiotic relationship with each other. And this obviously is the big takeaway here is he was, he came into this reality to be the essence of Mercury, which is what Jesus was. He was a messenger, right? He was a messenger. The ruler of Virgo is Mercury. He's got it right across the same. This is a symbiotic relationship right here, folks. And then his son is just over the line in Aries. It'll be Pisces and tropical, uh, in Vedic sidereal. And then over here in his seventh house, which is the house of Libra, here to balance the scales out, he's got Venus, which is he wants to, he loves the world that much to balance it out. And then he's got Kronos here to make it official. He ain't playing around. He's not playing around with this, with this placement here. Doing it in the, like making room for the age of Aquarius. Jesus says, my kingdom's not part of this world. That was in the Piscean age. That means to tell me that we're doing it in the Aquarian age. And there it is. He's got his chrono setting up the timeline and Venus setting up infinity because in, Venus is the Ankh, the symbol of the Ankh. And he's got his K2 there, spirituality and his Rahu right across the way in Cancer. So he's doing this with a lot of love. He's doing this to protect people. He's doing this to set up that structure and that emotional aspect with the with the with the lens of the moon ruling over cancer. And his moon is in Pisces. So he's got water in his Rahu position, his dragon's north node. So he, this is the the this is where you get the baptism and you know and the water and the body. And then he's got his moon, which rules cancer, in a water sign of Pisces. Jesus being a fisher of men. So this is this is Santos with his chart. It's so magnificent. The second coming of Christ, absolutely, Uponachi. And then if you do the astro alchemy, meaning if you go all the way around the zodiac wheel, and you go got to go around a few times when you place numerology here. So twenty. To, what's the twenty second house in this situation? It'd be house number five. How did I get that? Because we go, <coughs> we start at Aries, and you go all the way around, and then where does thirteen go? It goes in the middle. And then where does 14 go? Goes back to Aries. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So the words and the sword that Jesus said he was coming back to use, I'm not coming with peace. I'm coming with a sword. I'm coming with the words. You have the match to Michael and Bonacci and a dragon. It's 22. The master builder is in the sign of Sagittarius with Santos here. And Sag is ruled by Zeus, the king of the gods. Hey, Zeus which we go back to Pisces and he's in there with Mercury, the messenger. And you see, ladies and gentlemen, I like to bring the tarot cards in there to give us the picture. The fifth house of astrology is the Hierophant. And the job of the, Her the Hierophant means the guru. Now Santos has said so many times, I'm not a guru. He said that he's told the people I'm not a guru. Don't listen to me. Now he's very dominant and he's, he stands by his truth, but he's told the world, I'm not a guru, man. You should, don't follow me. Just like I say, I say the same things, but clearly 
he was born to do this. The fifth house, being the house of Leo, his Leo is in the rising position. He has his Mars there. He has his ascendant there. And, and, his, and his fifth house is occupied by Sagittarius, which is the ninth card, because it's the ninth zodiac sign, and it's the hermit. So these two cards represent Santos Panachi in his chart, born on March 24th, 1963. He is a guru and he is a hermit. And he's lived both lives and he continues to lead both lives. He's very wise. He's very intelligent. He's very smart. He's here to shine his lantern on the world stage. He's here to give you the, the truth on how he sees it. And he's here to be a guru. He doesn't have to acknowledge it, but it's in his fifth house. Fifth house is the guru. The ninth zodiac sign is the hermit. That satisfies both Sagittarius and the default position of the fifth house. And he's going to be a leader on the world stage with this because his son, which is ruled, ruling the fifth house, is in Aries, in tropical. So it tells me he's going to be a magician here and he will lead the way. He's a born leader to be a guru and a hermit to be this wise one, a sage, a shaman. And he's going to use his words to do it. And that's what he's done throughout the course of his career on the world stage. And that's why I'm a fan of him. And even the second coming of Christ, this number 83, is going to fit in this fifth house through alchemy, astro alchemy. How do we do that? Take 83, divide it by 13. Okay. If you take this, this is the, the quick way to do it. You take 83, and you divide it by 13, you're going to get 6.3. So we got to go around six times. And then you take 13, multiply it by six, you're going to get 78. And then you just subtract the 83 and you're going to get five. And that goes right to this right here. And there's the connection point again. Santos being part of the second coming. Is he the only second coming? Folks, all of us are part of it. But some people, some people are, have, have bigger roles in it than others. Obviously, you can see without a shadow of a doubt that the great Santos Bonacci had a big role in being part of this predestined, scripted reality. Him being on the 24th and it being the 83rd day of the year. He was born in 1963. It was not a leap year because March 24th can be the 84th day of the year, but he was not born in a leap year. Okay. He was not born on a leap year. So getting to the tail end of this, another some more, more confirmations. The number 83 through mathematics. Now we, we do syncretism with this. 83 is the 23rd prime number. And 83 is tied to that. And Pisces is 23. I go right back up here. Look at, he's stacked in Pisces. He's stacked in Pisces. Jesus, he's a messenger. He's going to get emotionally involved. with. He's going to take on the wounds of the world. And then Pisces is the ruler of the 12th house. I go back here to Cancer. It's another water sign. It's doing it with care, compassion, and love. He really cares about people. If you get to know this guy, well, you know, like I've got to become friends with him. And he's, he's a genuine, loving man. That's why I love him like a brother. I see the good in him. But the, despite the good, bad, and ugly we all have in ourselves. And this house, number 12, there's Sirius right there. If you're a fan of it, it's going to be in Gemini here, but it's going to ex ex move into this. And then here, there's his Rahu. His main desire in life is to make the world a loving, caring, compassionate paradise again. That's what his job is through the lens of Pisces. Pisces being the fish, Pisces being a human being, Pisces being the great mystic. Pisces is the mystic. It's the hangman. In the tarot, he didn't have, doesn't have a choice, folks. Santos Bonacci did not have a choice in his code. He's doing his code. And then the last thing I want to point out here, it's called the second coming. 27 and 23, that's going to give you the number 50. 50 is going to be tied to tin. Tin is tied to Jupiter. But it's also the weight of the 22nd element called titanium. Titanium has several isotopes. One of them is 50. And there it is the Titan. Okay. When you get incarnated into this reality, when you're born into this reality, you become a Titan. We are the sons and daughters of earth, spirit into matter. We are Titans. Okay. That's why Titans rise up. And that's the code he got folks. So there it is the complete version of the second coming of Christ. I hope you like this. Uh, so again, this big shout out to my fr great friend Santos. He doesn't, we don't agree on everything, but you know what the beautiful part about Santos and I is I can sit in a room with him and it's just a merry, merry, merry loving conversation. It's amazing. It's amazing. He doesn't know, and he, you know, like he, he likes the debate and all that stuff, but that's him. That's his code. And he, he knows it, man. 
but I value him as a human being because I see what he came into this world to be. And that's what I'm concerned with. That's what I'm looking at. And again, my final answer is he didn't have a choice. He doesn't have a choice to do his code. So whether you like him or not like him doesn't matter because you can like, so you can, you can like a full moon. You can go yell at the moon. Moon's not going to move for you. You can hate the sun when it's hot out, but and to go, good luck going to tell the sun to move because it ain't going to move for you. He's doing his job. He's part of the second coming of Christ. He's died, tied directly to it. And that's my final answer. So ladies and gentlemen, we'd love to hear what you saw. Keep your comments cordial. Trust me, because if you're not about loving here, I, I have no problem deleting your comments. I, I am, I'm all about freedom of speech, but if you're going to be an asshole about your comments, well, then you, you might just not want to leave a comment. Okay? Because again, these are my opinions and truths. Even I know Santos and I, he doesn't have to agree with everything I say. These are, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan, Decode Your Reality, sending you a ton of love wherever you're at in this reality. Till next time, we will. See you later.